Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose same and remains the same. To bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. And believe it or not, there is no other way. And we will stick to that path. We will not hold fast to tradition. Because there is a question mark today. What are we preaching? What is the church doing? Are we preaching tradition? Are we teaching tradition? Or are we preaching truth? What is it that we are supposed to preach and teach to the people of God? I can tell you that in no uncertain term, we are expected to produce truth. But many things done in church today and many things that we see happening, strange doctrine, strange things that's coming from the pulpit or coming from the organizations. They're not mandated by God. It is rather something that has been established and mandated by man. And so we see people now going with tradition, whether it's tradition from days of old or tradition that has suddenly come upon us as of modern time we see many observing tradition rather than observing the word of God but don't be alarmed because it's a tradition there's a tradition in this um, in, in, in certain realm of Christendom that would want you to believe that we don't know what's coming next but I say that's a lie because the truth is, the scripture tells us what is coming next, what to expect. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, you look carefully at the scripture, it tells you that the Holy Spirit expressly say that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, because they have their own conscience seared with a hot iron we see many people in churches today many people I shouldn't even call it churches many people in some organizations today preaching and teaching things that's traditional but nothing to do with scriptural and I'm not knocking every tradition that we observe or practice because some tradition some tradition is really good for us you may observe some tradition that's really good. But I can say this in no uncertain terms that if a tradition go against the very teaching of scripture that you should avoid it. Any tradition that goes against the command or statutes of God I would say to you it's wicked, it's lawlessness and it's demonic. There are no good tradition that weakens the church or weakens what we represent. Not the word of God, but what we represent, what we represent, because the word of God will never be weakened. But the method in how it's delivered and to the masses that's observing it, they are getting nothing but lukewarm water down. Not even truth, but half a truth. If it goes according to what First Timothy chapter 4 says, if it's lies and hypocrisy. And we see men, many men, very good purveyors. They are teaching lies and hypocrisy because their conscience is seared. Because they are doing things to gain. They are doing things for illicit gain. I say illicit because it's not from God. Now you must understand this. But first let me tell you, we are coming from Mark chapter 7. And we are looking at... Verses 1 to 20. I'm saying to you, not many of us today understand the difference between tradition or truth. And that's where there is a great divide. Because many things we observe and many things we see in churches today, it is traditional. But if you search the scriptures in no uncertain terms, you will see that the scripture, the scripture dictates otherwise. So let's get into what is tradition. 
The difference between tradition and truth is this, it's very simple. When we talk about a tradition, we're talking about holding on to a set of customs that's passed down to us from generation to generation. And some of these traditions, we feel very strongly about it. And if you look in the portion of scripture, which is the focus scripture, Mark chapter 7, and you look at verse 5, when these religious people, the Pharisees and scribes, the Pharisees were the religious people, the scribes were writing down, but they were all in cahoots because the scribes would write the things that the Pharisees usually would say or tweak it here and tweak it there. But this is the conversation, this is the inter interaction. Look at 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions? of the elders let's stop right there the tradition of the elders you see they were looking and observing the traditions of the elders but not the tradition of God and this wasn't something new because the prophet Isaiah addressed this earlier on and so Jesus quote the prophet Isaiah when he look at verse verse 6 he said I, and he answered and said to them well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as it's written these people honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me why is that because in vain they worship me teaching doctrines teaching do, teaching us doctrines the commandment of men so I'm saying this Tradition is something that's passed down and it's usually what man think it is or say it is. Now, 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 you have instances in the scriptures where the apostles, etc. If Apostle Paul, they may refer to a certain tradition. But as I said earlier, if a tradition goes against the very word of God, then it's to be avoided. It's, to, it's demonic. You cannot stick to and hold something dear to you that has no place in the scripture. Now when we speak of truth on the other hand, as I often say, truth is exclusive to God. Because Jesus himself tells you that I am the way. I am the truth. Now let's go to the scripture so we can break it down. We can break it down. You turn your Bibles to John. John chapter 14. Jesus had to make it very clear. Jesus says right here, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So you can hold to your traditions all you want. You will never get to heaven. Most of you are holding on to tradition, singing you're on your way to heaven. You're not on your way to nowhere. You're not going to heaven if you hold to the tradition. And not to the teaching of Jesus Christ. Jesus made it clear. Jesus said that I am the way. I am the truth. So truth then is exclusive to God. Truth is exclusive to Jesus. Because not everything that we say or we believe is true. Because a man can get up today and say something and he, he may classify that as truth. And traditionally it may be looked at as truth. But is it according to God's truth? You see, God's truth is different from man's truth. God's truth is not hypocritical, you know. God's truth does not go against the word of God. So sometimes you are in a certain situation and you see man preaching and telling you something and teaching and it goes against the very word of God that cannot be true. It cannot be true. The scripture tells us that we should not add or take away from this very word which is the truth of God. I am mean he is God. The way means you have to go through him. Not many ways as we see some tradition telling you. That there are many ways to God. No they are not. It's only one way. I am. Meaning he is God. The way. Meaning he is the only way. The life. Meaning he is the one that can give you eternal life. And not an eternal life of torment, but eternal life of peace. Eternal life that is free from all the traditions of man. Eternal life where you will observe, you will observe everything that, every, you cannot even imagine, imagine it. And I said to you, the only way tradition is good in church, 
is only if it's going to push, push the message, push, push the gospel. For example, many churches have a tradition of holding several prime meetings per week. It's not mandated in the scriptures that we should have several prime meetings per week, but it's tradition, and they're using it. They're not focusing on themselves. They're not focusing on self-promotion. They are praying. They are breaking down strongholds. So how, how can that tradition be evil? No, it cannot be evil because it's fulfilling and it's pushing forward the teaching of the scriptures. Now, the only way, again, let me beat it. Let's go over it. Tradition is of any good to us is unless it stick to the path of righteousness stick to the path of holiness and it's coming from way back then the prophet Jeremiah addressed this thing when Israel was going away trained from the traditions of the prophet Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 in no uncertain terms thus said the Lord stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths Meaning, ask for the ancient way, where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. Jesus even, Jesus, Jesus even quote this in the book of Matthew, that you will find rest, but you have to stand in the path. No, we're not in the path of the Israel. We're not Israelites. So how is that related to today's day principle? Stand in the way. Stand in the path. Meaning a preacher or a man of God must portray and observe the word of God, observe the knowledge of God. Because it's the old way. Because those ways were given to us by the prophets, by the scriptures. Everything that was written aforetime is written for our learning. And so therefore, we got to go back to this because this is a foundation. And so if your tradition is built on the foundation of God, you cannot stray. Because your foundation is solid. But if your tradition that you're observing is built on something that you conjure up, then that has nothing to do with it. You, you, you cannot say you're standing in the way and ask for old paths. So you go into a church and you observe something strange going on. You flip your Bible and you open your Bible and you look at your Bible. I say, but how is it contradicting what the Bible is saying? They're not, they're, 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 they're not following the old path. And so in that sense, in that sense, we're standing in the way. You ask for the old path, meaning the ways of the prophet, which was given to us for us to learn, for us to understand. And guess what? All those prophets, all those old paths lead to Jesus Christ. So some people when they talk about the law, but the law was a shadow of what to come. Who came? Jesus Christ came. So we no longer have to hold on to the tradition of the law because everything directs us to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ himself told you, told you or told us back then that he did not come to abolish the laws of the prophet. You see, Jesus himself even observed it. But what Jesus did was streamline it because many people could gladly add or take away and so that's the reason you have over seven, 600 and, uh, what more, 613. What started out as 10 morphed into a lot of stuff. How many of you can remember? How many, do you know how many laws there is in your own society? If someone really wants to get you, they just pull one of those archaic laws out. I said, but I didn't know that. No. There are some laws there if people really want to get frivolous, really want to get, really want to, really want to, to get you, they can pull a law. I guarantee you they can pull a law to get you with anything they want to. So I'm saying to you, unless a tradition, unless a tradition is going to lead you to the path of righteousness, you need to avoid it. And as I said, that every tradition should point to Jesus Christ. And so the, when the prophet Jeremiah was telling you, look here, stand in the way, and we say in today's uh, principle, it means the man of God should observe and go and look at the tradition. Look at what the prophet wrote. Not what any man wants to make up in his mind. And we saw that the path leads to Jesus Christ. And so you look at Hebrews 10, verse 19. Listen, 
It says, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. Now, let me break that down for you. Where the good way is, and walk in it, going back to Jeremiah, I told you that all the way, all the path lead to Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10, by a new and living way. By a new and living way. So you cannot hold on to tradition that's going to lead you away from Jesus Christ. Many of us have tradition of certain spirituality in our culture. You need to get rid of it. Some people have said, but we cannot get rid of our heritage. Yes, you can get rid of something that is holding you back. You can get rid of it. Many people have tradition of drinking a whole lot of alcohol, which is getting them sick. You have to get rid of that tradition. Stop it in the tracks. Many people have tradition of eating high carbs, carbohydrates too much, give you diabetes. You need to stop it. And I'm just being gentle because many of us have certain traditions that we dare not speak of because it's so evil. And once again, any tradition that encourages us to do anything contrary, contrary to the word of God, we must avoid it. Even traditions in the church today where we see man doing strange things as the man Timothy, Timothy was told by the Apostle Paul. You see people giving way to deceitful spirits, listening to doctrines of demons. And we see that happening today. When people are cleverly reproducing the word of God and adding things to it, adding things to it, adding things to it, adding a new meaning to it, spinning it their way. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't know if they're looking at the same scripture, the same book. And so people are getting, getting confused. Jesus Christ tell you that woe be unto the shepherd who caused one of the little ones to stumble. And I said, the little ones, the little ones is, 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 is a believer of any age. It doesn't matter. But if your teaching caused them to stumble, you will be held accountable. And so James come again and James tell you that those of us who teach will be more harshly or strictly judged. And so if you're teaching, if you're ministering tradition over truth, you better stop it. You better wake up. If you're telling people things and it's traditional and you're adding to the word of God, listen to the scriptures very carefully. Revelation chapter 22 tells you no uncertain terms. Listen, verse 18, for I testify to everyone who hears this word of prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things... God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away the words of, of, of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. It doesn't matter how well you want to preach up a storm. It doesn't matter how well you are loved. If suddenly, if suddenly you're going to tell, tell the congregation that the word of God has evolved... Once upon a time, the church would not be in cahoots with society because not everything that society has to offer is, is or should be embraced by the church. Meaning, it may be law in society, but it goes against the law of God. And if it goes against the laws of God, you should not partake. And the scripture says, come out from among them. Come out from among them and I will take you unto myself. But many people want to embrace society because of the tradition. We see where the true tradition of even marriage come under attack. And many people are embracing the new way. And the new way is a good thing to do in their eyes. But no man, no man is good unless his goodness is taught to him by God. And I say to you today, my brothers and sisters, any tradition that takes or promotes anything otherwise from the gospel, you should avoid it. Churches must not, must not compromise. We are not placed here in this world to compromise the gospel. If you are compromising the gospel, you are not a church, you are just a gathering place. Because the church can never compromise. Man can compromise, 
But the church that Jesus Christ built, upon this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That church will never compromise. So when you see people falling away, giving heed to deceitful spirits, having their conscience seared, is because they are not the true church. They are not the true church that Christ himself built. Upon this rock I will build my church. Churches will not compromise the gospel. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And we see churches compromising the gospel to attract new people. It does not matter. You cannot compromise the gospel because it's not your word. It's God's word. And the Holy Spirit tells you that he will draw man unto himself. Not you the preacher. You don't have to worry about doing any programs to attract people. The moment you start doing programs to attract people, it's not about God. How about you reproduce the gospel of God? How about you reproduce the doctrine of Christ? How about you teach repentance? But you're doing things to attract people because you want to attract the young people. So because you want to attract the young people, you're building all these basketball courts. You're building a club in the church because that's what the young people love. We are going to play nothing but some gospel music in this club. And you step up in that club, it's replicating the same club that's there in society. The same darkness. You can't see anything. The same music. You got to listen very carefully because there's no mention of Jesus, God, or salvation, or repentance in any of those music. The same thing. They're selling down, they're selling some, yes, they may even be selling alcoholic beverages because it's okay. That's what society is saying. And you can bring your date to the club and feel good and feel right at home. How is that different from the world? How is that different from the world? You're supposed to be set apart. You're supposed to be set apart. And if you're a preacher, and if you're standing in the pulpit and you're doing anything else otherwise from truth, then you will be punished. Because your appointment comes from God. As we have received this mercy, as we have, re as, as we have received this ministry, as we have received mercy, pardon me, book of Corinthians. That's what the scripture says. You receive your ministry. And if you look in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and look at verse 7, it says, For which I was appointed a preacher. I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. That's the apostle Paul. And I am speaking the truth in Christ. And not lying. And not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. So a preacher must teach truth and not tradition. Because his appointment come from God. But then again, some people buy their credential online. But then again, some people just wake up and decide that they're going to be, become a pastor. You must be given your ministry. But then again, some people wake up and, talk, and start calling themselves apostles and prophets. But then again, we see all of that happening here. And they're hearing from spirits. The spirit tell me they like to say. But not the Holy Spirit. But you see, the scripture tells you that they're, 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 they're teaching stuff that's coming from, from demons. Listen. 1 Timothy 4. No, the spirit with spirit. You see that? Uppercase S or capital S as some of you may know it. The spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, says in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Listen. Giving Giving you know what? Giving e to deceiving small as spirits. So the Holy Spirit are, is telling you that many will come, taking on to themselves the names and giving heed to the teaching of the small s, which is the spirit, which is the devil, which is the dragon. And no wonder the scripture tells you that the gods, the god of this world, I should say in the book of Corinthians, has blinded many. And so when you produce the true gospel, the true teaching, many people are offended because you're going against tradition. You're going against tradition. Many are still holding on to tradition. And just like in the scripture right here, just like in the focus scripture, we see it. We see a hypocritical set of people and it's the same thing today. They're holding fast to the tradition and the law and not the teaching of Jesus Christ. Meaning they're just a religious set of people. You walk into some churches 
And all you here, all you're doing is holding your bondage under the law. Holding your bondage under the law. Telling you everything. Wonder if they're going to go back and revisit and telling you about wearing wool and linen together. That's a total different subject we would have to get into another time. As to why that was so. But they're holding people under the bondage of the law. But what the scripture says, Romans chapter 3, verses, look at this, very carefully, 19. Now we know that whoever, that whatever the law says, it is to those who are under the law. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Sinners are subjected to the law. So why is the law being produced in churches? Why is, not, why is not the teaching of Jesus Christ? After all, Jesus said that he came and he fulfilled the law. So if you are following after Jesus Christ, it means that you should follow him. You should follow him, not the tradition that they are holding you hostage to. And so they will teach you everything in the old way, but not in the way of Christ. Because they're still holding you hostage as the Pharisees were doing right there. And so some people mix a little Christ with the law. Mix a little Christ with the law. Mix a little Christ with the law. And that's what Romans, Romans 3 was just telling you. You are no longer under the law. Now, many people, many people do not know this. Because many times, the churches are not doing a good job at reproducing truth. Because they're just into frivolous teaching. Teaching people feel good session. But as a man of God, as a teacher of the truth, you should understand this. 1 Timothy chapter 1, 8 to 16. I'm not going to go into all of it. I'll just read it. You should read that. And it will tell you that people who are old in who are holding fast to tradition, they are doing so above, above God. Look at 8. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayer, for fornicator, for sodomite, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there's any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. I don't have to read all of it. I don't have to read all of it. But some people are holding people hostage under this sort of teaching. And so you go into those churches. Though they may look strict, though they may be producing and saying, God, 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 there's not much Jesus coming for it. Because you must understand that as a minister, as the church, as Christendom, as Christians, as believers, our job is supposed to be ministering truth over tradition, not the other way around. It doesn't matter what society wants to do, what society wants to say, you are not bound by tradition. You are not bound by tradition. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 that you put off concerning former conduct the whole man which which grow corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness we must minister truth over tradition we must minister truth over tradition because truth has made us righteous truth is the prerequisite truth is the, re the prerequisite that we should go by that we will strive for don't waste time going after tradition because tradition will hold you back when you're when you when you're walking in truth then you'll do as the scripture says because walking in truth meaning you're fellowshipping with God through Jesus Christ. Meaning you're walking in the spirit and so you will not fulfill the laws of the flesh according to Galatians chapter 5. But you cannot understand that if your eyes are not open, if your ears are not hearing these things coming from the pulpit. Many times people waste time preaching prosperity and tell you the things that you want to hear, tell you to sow seeds. 
but this is a very painful tradition that we see coming forth these days especially in the western world and then we slowly see it spreading like a cancer toward the world so people want to sow their way out of every situation there is in life people no longer want to pray their way out of situation they don't believe in any prayer they just go to church and they want to sow their way sow a big seed their heart is far from God but they want to sow their way and so the prosperity preachers are having a field day and so they continue to 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 produce this tradition which now seems like the norm this tradition that compromises, the tradition that lies to people that's what that tradition do lie to people people want to sow seeds so they wear out of everything and isn't it strange isn't it strange that that scripture made it clear that blessing come from God blessing come from God you know my brothers and sisters it does not come from your tradition of sowing it doesn't matter how much you want to sow because God is the one that gives and God is the one that takes away so it doesn't matter what you're going through it's going to be up to God to give or to take away not how much you can sow because honestly some of us are sowing and we do not even belong to God some of us are sowing but we are so far from God but tradition tradition makes it look okay for you to sow tradition makes it look okay for you not to want to repent because you think once you sow everything is alright every little thing is going to be alright if I sow and it's a tradition today it's a tradition today it's a tradition today but I tell you once again my brothers and sisters the truth of God must and will prevail this nonsense that we see coming up today when they're telling everybody to sow their way out and it's a very it's a very it's a it's a very painful subject for me because I'm seeing it and everybody's peddling and sowing and they do not think it nothing and people are sitting in church today and as soon as they're going through a little difficulty instead of them praying they want to sow their way out of the situation instead of them seeking God seek ye first they want to sow their way out of the situation I am sick you want to sow your way out of the situation how about you sow some priors I am broke I want to sow my way you go and you borrow money to sow now isn't that contrary to the scriptures when the scripture tell you that the borrower, borrower will certainly be the slave isn't that contrary to scripture but nobody think it's nobody think it nobody think it's wrong and if you tell people that is wrong they'll tell you to leave them alone and so I will leave them alone continue sowing and the more you sow the, the, the more you become bankrupt you broke you broke but fervent prior that's the truth fervent prior because God is the one that would produce the blessing not your sowing of your seeds and I'm not saying God cannot honor and God doesn't honor people who give in to the kingdom to build up the kingdom and so oftentimes when I say that sowing of seed is not about money people are offended people like to do talking points because of the tradition of society they do not listen and because we do not listen we go astray because we don't read we go astray because tradition of society tells you that the talking point is best and so I once saw a man tweet something out bow down to me and all of this I will give you and everybody type in amen not realizing that the man just take a little piece of the scripture when Jesus Christ was led into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan when Satan was saying bow down to me and everybody is saying amen because it's tradition for us to look at talking points not to read no it's tradition not to investigate where things are coming from it's tradition to, to believe that everything that you see that is that is that is camouflage as something from God you believe it's good never know that never knowing that Satan himself will give you gifts you know that's why the scripture tells you that every good and perfect thing come from God above you may be getting some gifts here but it's certainly not from God yes and but but some of these people call themselves prophets and they're prophesying yes they can because they're given the knowledge by the evil one 
Not from the Holy Spirit. Remember, 1 Timothy 4, you see big S, which is the Holy Spirit. I have to term it like that. Big S, which is the Holy Spirit, tells you that people will be given heed to deceiving spirits and doctrine of demons. So you want to tell me that the demon is not influencing some people that you are saying amen to? Think again. And so we must always evaluate to see whether or not truth is being preached. Because I tell you this, you cannot go to God and say, hey, it's because he said that no, the onus is on you. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. He did not say the group shall bow. He did not say the tongue will, he did not say, did not say tongues of all the congregation. No, you're going to be on your own. And so I like to say this is the only truth. This is the only time you should be selfish for me, myself, and I. And it's when you're chasing after really, chasing after, um, chasing after your redemption, chasing after salvation. It's traditional for many people to go to church, you know. They find their church, they assemble in church in every Sunday, Easter, every holiday, every funeral, because it has something to do with church. So they find themselves there. It's traditional. But Jesus mash it up. Destroy tradition. Jesus said here, Mark 7, verse 6, he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? Many people are in church, but they're hypocrites. Sitting down there pretending like they're up to some good. They're not up to any good. Jesus says, Lip, this lips honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me. Teaching us doctrine, the commandments of man. Listen, look, but look at this. Look at verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, you old tradition of man. Laying aside meaning you let go of what God instructs you to. Let go of the teaching of the apostles. Let go of the teaching of Jesus Christ. Let go of, 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 of what Jesus instructs us to preach. Let go of that. Let go of what Jesus Christ was preaching. From the moment Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. But now you go into church, you never hear one thing about repentance. You hear about seeds all your life. So everyone in the church, they are no farmers because they all believe in sowing. They all believe in sowing. And we see many of these people who call themselves prophets, liars. They are no prophets. They don't, they don't open the book. They don't reproduce from the book. They don't speak anything that is concerning with, 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 with God. All they're telling you is things you want to hear. They just walk in. And they prophesy all sorts of lies. And people buy these things and calling them prophets. Calling them prophets. Calling them prophets. And so Jeremiah, they don't read the Bible because the tradition these days, the people don't read the Bible. People don't want this thing. It's archaic. Jeremiah 23. Look at this verse 16. Thus said the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart. They speak a vision from their own heart. But some people are saying, but what do you mean? What do you mean, preacher man? What do you mean? Then the scripture says that for he himself gave unto us. And then they will quote Ephesians 4. And look at verse 11. And he himself gave us so apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for equipping of the saints. But I say to you, look very carefully at Ephesians chapter 2. And you look at verse 20. It says, this is talking about the church having been built on the foundation of the apostles of the prophet. Being built, the apostles and the prophets... They were here. They were here. Having been built. Now I say that to you. I do not know if Jesus Christ manifests himself to some of these so-called apostles. I don't know if they were taught. But I do know that there are prerequisites for man to be apostles. And we see it in the Bible. Jesus himself taught them and sent them out. Yes, but what about Paul? And I said to you, Paul was on his way, on his way, and Jesus appeared to him, and Paul was stricken. Who are you, Lord? Reverence. 
didn't even know it was Jesus that, because he wouldn't, he wouldn't ask, who are you, Lord? But he realized that there was a higher power. And then Jesus said, I am Jesus, the one that you're persecuting. Then he said, okay, he had an encounter. But what about the teaching? What about the witnessing? But then you see, Ananias was later instructed to go to Paul because he is going to be my chosen vessel, Jesus said. But, said, but that, doesn't, that doesn't make me feel good. But did you see, when, did you see when, when Paul was presented to the apostles? Go back and read the Bible. Tradition is not telling you to read the Bible. So that's the reason these men can come and pull wool over your eyes and call themselves apostles. Call themselves prophets. But the moment you hear that, don't believe all the tradition. If they are truly an apostle, question them. Where was your encounter? How was your encounter with Jesus Christ? And then you listen. Who, who, who witnessed this? Then you listen. Because remember, you know, Paul was not there with Jesus Christ. But Ananias was sent. Ananias was sent with the, with, because he received the instruction. He's going to be my chosen vessel. So you ask these so-called apostles. Who confirmed it? But no. We see tradition. No, men are being, men are being ordained as an apostle. Isn't that a fallacy? They're being ordained as an apostle. Isn't that a fallacy? Ordained as prophets. Isn't that a fallacy? Revelation chapter 22 tells you that you do not add or take away from the word of prophecy of this book. Meaning the prophets have already done their job. All we're supposed to do now is replicate the word. And if you're going to stand, and if you're going to be in proxy of a prophet, what you should be doing is teaching what the prophets of old did. They come and they give warning. They come and they tell you to repent, to change your ways. Show me one prophet in this book that come and tell people only everything about prosperity. And a prophet could not go out and just say things because he felt like. Well, probably Balaam did. Balaam, Balaam, Balaam did, but at the same time, don't Balaam sow some deceitful seed because he was working on behalf of Balak. We still saw his hand. Though he knew God, we still saw his hand. But anyhow, anyhow, you cannot hold fast to tradition over truth. Truth supersedes tradition. Truth supersedes tradition. Truth supersedes tradition. Say it again. Truth supersedes tradition. And that's the reason Jesus Christ said it. Said it. Mark, Mark 7 verse 9. He said to them, all too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. Because you know what our tradition do to us? It empowers us. Our tradition puts us in high esteem. Our tradition these days... Because we want to pull our family member up. So we create a tradition now of first lady. If you want to call your pastor's wife a first lady, that's okay with you. If that's your tradition. As long as you're not putting her over the scripture. You're not putting her over other members in the church. Because the scripture tells you that believers in Christ in the book of James do not show favoritism. So not because she's your pastor's wife or your first lady. You're going to put her in an elevator over the elders, over the deacons, over any other member in the church. I'm here to tell you that truth is painful. Truth is painful. Because the truth is, many things that you think is good is bad for you. That's the truth. That's the truth. Fornication that you love so much is bad for you. Bad for you. Stealing, lying, revelry that you love so much is bad for you. It's very bad for you. But, but traditionally, it seems as if those things are good. It's the, it's the thing to do. When you do not know any better, it's the thing to do. But what did the Bible tell you? Now it tells you that Galatians 5, 19, now the works of the flesh are evident. You read it, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred. We see all these things manifesting today and they come like nothing. Because tradition has certainly crept in unnoticed. Tradition. The truth of God supersedes tradition. The truth of God supersedes tradition. Believers must be taught truth and not tradition. 
I don't care about your tradition. I care about the truth of God. You cannot hold people hostage. Or you should not be held hostage by tradition. You cannot. You cannot. You do such a thing, you're mocking God. Because you're ignoring the word. And the scripture tells you that do not be deceived. God is not mocked. You sow your tradition which is filled with deceit. You are going to pay. A man shall reap what he sows, the scripture says. He shall reap it. He shall reap it. Jesus Christ tells us in no uncertain terms to avoid certain things. But people do not. The only thing people want to, to say today is that Jesus is love. And that's it. He is love. He's a loving man, you know. He was here and, you know, he did this. You know, he, he did this, you know, when he died for our sins. Die for your sins, but you're still reveling. Die for your sins, but you're still living a life that's deep in sin. Liars, fornicators, adulterers, drunkards, revelers. All the things that is insipid. All the things that is wicked, that is lawless. But yet still the church many churches many organizations that was not built by god or if it was built by god they have strayed away they are now preaching nothing but lies and tradition but i tell you this jesus christ say in luke 4 look at 43 but he said to them jesus tell you this is jesus jesus tell the, the tell who, who they were around him you know this is what jesus said that he has to preach jesus said i must preach the kingdom of god to the other city also because for this purpose I have been sent if Jesus Christ come and Jesus is telling you that I have to preach I have to preach the kingdom of God to the other city so now we can we can put it all together from the moment Jesus began to preach and say repent and then Jesus is saying now I have to preach the kingdom of God Preach repentance so man art can be changed, so man can accept the kingdom of God, so man can e inherit eternal life through Christ Jesus, not one of eternal damnation. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is, my brothers and sisters. And once again, I'm not saying all traditions are bad. Not saying all traditions are bad. Because if you have a tradition of every year or whenever you want to feed the community, Every week you want to go out and you want to do grocery for the community. You know, you have some good church traditions. You do. But whenever those traditions are, are, are far from the truth of God, avoid it. Avoid it. Avoid it. Because we are to observe truth, not tradition. Traditionally, nowadays they'll tell you that Repeat after me, even though you, want, you don't want to repeat, but you want to do it because you, you don't want to feel bad. I used to do it back in the day. I, I repeat after many men because I want to feel, I don't want to be left out. Stick my hand in the air and I repeat the sinner's prayer. Now, that's a tradition. And some people are saying, but you know, some people don't know how to pray, you know. So, you know, I mean... Repentance don't say anything about you praying and repeating. Repentance saying you have to be sorry. Once you're sorry, that's the truth of the matter, you know. You don't have to wait for the pastor to come to town to say, repeat after me. What if the pastor don't come until next year? You're not going to say anything? You see, how, you see how that's a fallacy? Are you saying that nobody can repent if you don't tell them to repeat after me? The truth is this. All men are called unto repentance. The truth is this, wherever you are today, you can repent. Because it means you're sorry for all the evil things that you have done. And the truth is you don't have to remember them word by word. You don't have to remember when you did what, when you were 15, 16, 17, or even 10. Just tell God that you're sorry. And once you're sincere, you'll be no wise cast out. And so my brothers and sisters, truth is relevant because that is who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen.